Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Calvary Temple and all our online listeners. We welcome you to this morning service. We thank God today for his blessed kindness, for his promises. We thank God for his never-ending, never-failing promises. In Joshua chapter 23, Joshua in his old age reminds the elders and leaders of Israel of God's never-failing promises. And we want to acknowledge God's promises today by stepping in and having that faith to lean on his promises to lean on him and remember that when we stand on the solid rock the enemy can never prevail let's worship God when you're standing on the solid rock hallelujah Lean it on the 
We can lean on the everlasting arms of our Savior who is able to carry us through every situation that we go through. Give God a note of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms and the everlasting love of the Lord. Come on, somebody glorify the name of the Lord with us here at Calvary Temple Community Church. Right here from Groves, Six Road, St. Philip in the beautiful island of Barbados. Good morning to all of you right across our YouTube channel and of course on our Facebook platforms. We bless you, we bless you. Thank you for connecting with us on your pages, on your channels. We give God thanks for each and every last one of you. Our precious Father and God, we thank you for bringing us to yet another Sunday morning. We thank you for every good and wonderful gift that comes from the Father of lights. We thank you, Lord, for your precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for using mightily this worship team this morning. Thank you for anointing the band and the singers, God. We bless these minstrels, God, and we pray, Lord, that the gospel of Jesus Christ that they have communicated to us, Lord, will go to the very ends of the earth before the end of the age. We bless our teams here from Calvary, those who led us in the into the presence of the Lord, Lord, the band, the tech, hallelujah, the singers, and everybody, everybody who's connected with us today. We are careful to give you, God, all the honor and all the glory as we continue to lean heavily on the everlasting love of God. Somebody go ahead and declare the amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, there's something about leaning on the Lord. And I prophesy over you in this generation, in this uh, time that we're coming through and trying to make sense out of this very difficult pandemic. I declare it over your hearts, over your lives, that as you lean on the Lord, not on what men have to say, not on what governments have to do, but if you lean on the Lord, we understand that people have got to do what they they think they need to be doing I have no problem with that yes heads of governments will say A they will say B they will say L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S and they will also say X, Y and Z but I want somebody to understand from Calvary today but as you lean on the Lord that God is going to open up opportunities for you yes the windows of heaven shall be opened over your life and God is not mock hear what I tell you what a man sows that he shall reap and if you put your trust in the Lord. If you put your faith in Almighty God, greater things shall come in your direction. So I encourage you to stretch your hands towards God right now and declare, God, I'm not leaning on the arm of flesh, but I am leaning on the arm of the Lord. And that is my testimony. If that's your testimony this morning, come on, go ahead and declare it to a watching world. That's my testimony. Let your neighborhood know that you put your trust and your faith in Almighty God. Yahweh, Jehovah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Somebody shout Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Where you look, you will lean. And that's a fact. Where you look, you will lean. I'm looking to the Lord. Are you looking to him today? Praise God. Praise God. Listen, I want to hurry up and get out of the way. I bless God for these minstrels, as I already mentioned up front. And I want to make room now for the rich word of the Lord. This is a young man, one of the uh, credentialed ministers out of Bethel Life International Fellowship, located there in Quebec, Canada. I want you to make welcome at this time, Minister Dalton Spencer, as he breaks the bread of life. God bless you, Dalton. Thank you, Pastor. First of all, let me say thanks be to God for this opportunity that he's given to me through our senior pastor. I'm very grateful and I'm humble. And Lord, I want to thank you for that remnant that will stand and declare your truth no matter what the cost may be. Proverbs tells us not to lean on our own understanding, but to lean on the understanding of the Lord. Because if I cannot lean on my own understanding, it means that I cannot lean on yours, and you cannot lean on mine. 
So we all need to lean on Christ Jesus. I would like to read the scripture from Revelation 13, 1 to 9. And it goes like this. Then I stood on the sand and sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And on his horns, ten crowns. And on his head, a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of the heads, and as it has been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. To blaspheme his name, his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given to him over every tribe, every tongue, and every nation. All who dwell, now this is the key, this is what I want to deal with. All who dwell on earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain before the foundations of the world. If anyone has an heir, let him hear. In John chapter 1, verse 15 and 20, John the Baptist spoke of a man who he says, he who comes after me is preferred before me because he was before me. And in John chapter 8, verse 58, Jesus was speaking and he said, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And I find these verses to be very interesting. Because interesting in the sense that what is happening in this world today seems to boggle the minds of people. Because in the quest for world dominance, which, which people term the one world government with a one world currency, the COVID pandemic seems to be an agent undercover being used to accomplish such. Don't tell me a bat has delivered a deadly disease after all these years in existence. I have a question on that, a question mark on that. But I say to us as children of God, Jesus Christ was slain before the foundations of the world. It tells me that God's kingdom has already been established. So it is known that you cannot have an imitation of a government if there wasn't one because how would you know that there's an imitation because Satan likes to imitate that which God represents all the time. 
So this is why I say, saints, be not afraid. Arise and be wise and run the race towards the prize. And I say, be not afraid. Paul in Romans 7, 24 says, Who shall deliver me from this body of death? And here today, we find that people are running to and fro. They're scared of dying. Very, very scared of dying. Nobody wants to die. And they are rushing towards a vaccine that has no guarantee, no guarantee whatsoever, what will happen down the road because it has not been proven down the road to see, well, this will be good for the benefit of those who have taken it. I thank God for science and medicine. But the pursuance of such who are ungodly, that is where the scare can come. But children of God, hold firm, be steadfast. For Hebrews 9.27 tells us, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, judgment. And in 28, it tells us that Christ was offered up to bear the sins of many. Remember, bear the sins of many. And he is coming again for those who eagerly await his coming apart from sin for salvation. We can rest assured in being saved from this body of death. This body, as we say, while it is all good and well to take good care of it because it is the vehicle that God used that people would see who he is through us who is reflecting the light that is the light of man that was in Christ Jesus. And Jesus is very, very, very important and of the utmost significance to the believer. I ask myself, can you foresee someone setting a flame a hundred dollars, a hundred dollar bill. Think of it. Can anyone foresee someone setting a flame, a hundred dollar bill outside of his gates in search of a small bitcoin? It boggles the mind. It boggles the mind. Lots of questions are asked and many answers leave you bewildered. Why? Man has no answers. And today we are ill-fed we are ill-fed and misled and children of God we need to arise be wise born again believers need not fear what will bring what tomorrow will bring for he who has made today has all of our tomorrows in his hands. 
And God will not fail those whose heart is in tune with him. But I want to take you back to the key verse I'm really looking at. I'm not concerned about the beast because I worship the Lord God. And what I found interesting in that verse is that the names that were not written in the book of life that belongs to the Lamb, I want to repeat, the names of those who were not written in the Lamb's book of life were the ones who worship the beast. Take note. In John chapter 4, verse 24, Jesus was speaking to the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well. And he says to her, you do not know who you worship. But we know who we worship. And God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and truth. And a lot of that is said over the years by many people. And sometimes I ask myself, what does it really mean to worship God in spirit and truth? Is it a catchphrase? I think not. But when, when I think of this verse, Revelation 13, 8, it is saying to me that worship is of the utmost importance in a believer's life. And when you believe, it must reflect because the purpose of the church for me, where I am concerned, is that we know that Christ has shown us who God is. Now we are to show the world who Christ is. And it is not about who is sharing the word, who is bringing a word. It has nothing to do with who want to be seen. And I want to bring a little, a little scenario to you. Husband and wives. The Bible tells us husbands love your wife. And we are, we are called to do that. But here it is that Christ, Christ is our bridegroom. We are his bride. And it is not what we would bring, we would get out of a marriage. It is what we bring to the marriage. And here Christ has brought to us Love. He loved in the fullest. He gave his life for the church because he loved us so much. But what are we giving to him? It saddens me. It saddens me because when I look into God's word and to know that John says in 1 chapter 18, that no man has seen God at any time. Only the Son, only the Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. And John says in his letter, in John 1, 4, 12, he says again, no man has seen God at any time. But if you love one another, God abides in you. And his love is perfected in us. But in verse 16 says, God is love. No, God is love. 
And John 4.24 says, God is spirit. So you can't worship somebody you cannot see. Because you wouldn't know. But hear this. And this is of utmost importance. This is why we need to get into the book of John. In the letters of John. And the, and the revelation that Christ gave to John. We need to get into that. Those portions of scriptures. Those books. So that we can have a greater understanding of who this Christ is that we love, that we worship. We cannot, we cannot show the world who Christ is if we have no love in us. We must be instruments of love. Love that has no no shortcomings. Love that is perfect, that will cast out the fear. The world needs to see Christ. For the church is to show who Christ is. We are the light of Christ. Who is the light of men? And you can read that in the book of John 1 to 5. Verses 1 to 5. Chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. It is by loving each other is how we show our love towards one another. But there are some questions that leaves us in a, in a quandary. And in, in Isaiah 1 verse 18, here is God speaking, come. Come, let us reason together. He says, those who are sin be as scarlet, red as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. But the key here is this, is this what he's saying to us, that if we obey, we shall eat the good of the land. But if we refuse and rebel, the sword is upon us. Now, I want to make this abundantly clear. This must be made abundantly clear. To worship God in spirit and truth is to walk the talk. Not the other way around. And it must be done in pure love. Because God is love and God is spirit. And the spirit is manifested in what you do. This is how we know we love God if we love our brothers and sisters. And we have that on our side because God would not withhold nothing good to those who love him. I, would, I can say this. We are not Paul bearers. We are armor bearers and if you look into Ephesians 6 chapter 6 take verse 14 you would find the armor and every piece of armor that we are to put on is in Christ Jesus in him and him alone and the helmet of salvation it's your head it's the covering of your mind and the shield of faith that would prevent the darts that come our way. The breastplate of righteousness that keeps us in right standing with God. And your feet shod with the gospel. The gospel who? The gospel of Jesus Christ. We also have the sword of the Spirit. And what is the sword of the Spirit? The very word that comes out the mouth of the Lord. And the very word that has created the heavens and the earth and that is being upheld by the same power of the word is this word that is going to make the enemy 
uh, uh, self-destruct. Because all Christ has to do is open his mouth and says, that's it. And whatever he says it is, it is the enemy done. And we know, we know that death has been conquered long ago because from the day that Christ rose from the dead is the day that death died. So we should never have any fear about this life. Because if we try to save this life, we shall lose it because this body is dying anyway. It's dying anyway. So if you try to save something that is dying, it is like, oh, the vaccine can save me. So let me run and get it. But at the end of the day, the vaccine keeps you from dying? No. Christ is the one who keeps us. For he is the life. He is the source of life according to John 5.26. He is the source of life. We are not to take Christ lightly. I find that we can talk, we can talk the walk and, and be, sometimes we are speakers, man, we are so eloquent in presenting ourselves. And it is not about you or me because when we come to think of it, the evidence in a person's life of one who loved the Lord is how they treat others. I know, I know, sometimes I do find difficulties in dealing with some people. And I'm not being wrong the bush about it. But the thing that hurts me is when people who profess the word of God, who knows the word of God, find themselves in a position that you have to question yourself. Is this the God that you love? Is this the God you worship? Where is the love of Christ in our lives? You cannot steal. You cannot hear love. So as James tells us, be ye not only hearers. You can hear I love you. But do you know what is it? If it, if it is not known, it is not seen. Where are we going? No wonder why a lot of us are running here and there. We are so uncertain. This pandemonium. And what do you find interesting about this pandemonium? Cause of the COVID. Take out the two. Take out the suffix. Pan. Which means it all in Greek. And take out. Take out the. The suffix. O-U-M. What you're left with. Demon and pandemonium speaks of wild uproar, confusion. And the world right now is in confusion. All over the world, we have pandemic, COVID, COVID pandemic, but there, there's an economic pan, pandemic too. The worlds are reeling, the world governments are reeling. There's no money, there's no money. But there are some people, I used to say to my wife, in, here in Barbados, that there are individuals in this country who can bail out the economy and still got money in the pocket. There are individuals who can do that. But no, because of corrupt minds, people tend not to do that. But yet, you have people who have great influence People who band themselves together to try to weaken the economies of other countries, to put them in a bind that they are under their control. One world government? Let me tell you, saints, listen carefully. This is why I say, arise and be wise and press towards the prize that God has in store for us. Our faith is going to end in sight and the, the result of our faith is at hand. This is why I can't speak for A, B, and C. I can speak for D. My name is Dalton. And I know that I am longing and I'm eagerly looking for the return of Christ. And I say to my wife, it may sound strange how we put it. But I say, I want him to come because I want to be in a world 
where there is no sin, no evil. But you know what? I said, even if I ain't in it, I want it. And that is to say how much I want it. Just like the Hebrew boys in the fire, they said, if Christ don't come through for us, we will not bow down. And that is the spirit of God that guides us and helps us. I, I was watching the story of Polycarp. And when Polycarp was told to denounce the Lord Jesus Christ, and he says for 85 years, Christ has never failed him yet. And you know what I said? I said the fire couldn't be burning him. I remember the Hebrew boys in the fire. The fire couldn't be burning them. We think that fire, we know fire is burning. You can feel everything. But let me tell you something. God gives the grace and the power that you go through those things and you don't feel it. Hence, he says, my peace I give to you, not as the world giveth. So in these circumstances, Polycarp said, look, not the, Polycarp, the people when they saw that the fire was not burning him. And I, I, that, was, that, was, that was awesome. The fire was not burning him. They went and they took a spear and, and pierced him to make sure he died. And you know, I wonder too, if these jobs that people get in has that negative effect. I don't know. I ain't a scientist and I profess to be not. I am just a, a simple born again believer who I love the Lord and I want to love him even more. And I know as I stand here to speak, it isn't easy because sometimes the way I, the things that I see, I cry. I cry to see how man can be so cruel and brutal to another man made in the image like he own self. It is painful. It is hurtful. But what is more damaging? When that is in the world, expect that. But when it is the house of the Lord, my God, help us. Help us, Father God. We need your help. Because it, it is heart-wrenching when you can sit among the brethren. It's just like sitting and eat and drink. Your heart is far from, far from me. And this is why as a man think, if so is he. What are you thinking today? What it is you are thinking today? What's on your mind? Is it the fear of death? Or is it the fear of life? So that question is very profound. Are you afraid to die? Or are you afraid to live? God knows every man's thoughts. And even before time, we were formed, he formed us in our mother's womb. And David said it. Check Psalm 139. There's even if you go in, even if you go into hell, you are there, Lord. We cannot hide, for the eyes of the Lord is upon all those who is on the face of the earth, and each one of us have to give an account. So this is why that verse speaks a lot to me. Revelation thirteen eight, because I'm concerned about the beast. The beast can run and rave. And he's going to end up in an eternal grave. So, so there's, no need, there's no need to even give him a thought. He's, he's not deserving of it. But our hearts and our eyes and our minds should be fixed and settled on the one and only one who gives life. The one who has all authority and all power. And even when we look at the fruit of the Spirit, sometimes we hear about fruits, but it is one fruit. It is one fruit, and that fruit is love. And it comes from God is Spirit, 
God is love. Put John 4, 1, 4, 1 John 4, 16 and John 4, 24 and you will find God is spirit, God is love. So you can't separate God's love from his spirit. And if the spirit of God is in you, the spirit of love is in you. Christ said, if you abide in my word, and my word abide in you, it is the same as if his spirit is living in you, and you are walking in the spirit because you're living. When you're walking, you're living. But you're not, if you're not walking, you're not moving, you're dead. So if Christ is living, and his word is living and powerful, his word in us should be alive and powerful. So we shouldn't be ducking about, running and hiding, trying to avoid X, Y, Z, because what, has, what is actually taking place was prophesied. How can we go against that which is being prophesied, which will come to pass? We have to show that we are together as one, love one another, pray with one another, pray for one another, because it is about, it is about God in our lives. It is, it is what God has given to us to, that we know who Christ is. We are in turn are to show the world who Christ is. How can you win someone to God, bring someone to God by hatred? And there's so much hatred in the midst that it is so painful. And the truth is, I can't stand it. I simply can't stand it. And I know if I can't stand it, what about God who made the whole world? What about God who, who is in control of everything? You think he loves? He, look, he is so wonderful that even when he, he loves us so much that he made us in the likeness and the image of his own self. That in itself is love. And what would an eternal God made someone in the likeness or being in the likeness and image of him own self as temporary? No way. So our lives, we were made to be, we are an, the eternal object of love in, the, in God's heart. And God, as I said before, he would not withhold nothing good from those who love him. What are we doing? What are we doing? And then again, even when we are doing, why are we doing what we are doing? If our hearts are not right, I don't want to use this term again, but shut up. If your heart ain't right, shut up. Because our hearts are to good there. Paul says we are to renew our minds. And if we do not renew our minds, pray tell me, how can we worship God in spirit and in truth? People need to understand that walking in the spirit and walking in truth is literally, literally walking in loving obedience to the word of God. Whatever, as, as Mary says, whatever he says, do, do it. But a lot of us too know what to do, but we don't do it. The Bible tells me that is sin. But there is a sad, there's a sadness in the host of God, whereas people would come in come into the house and even when the very word that is able to save their souls the fine the instrument in the hand to, to search all other things except to seek the word but we could hide and do these things from the pastor or whoever is bringing the word. But let me tell you this. You can't hide from God. Because everything is naked and bare before God. And you know, 
I say, remember years ago when it was a boy that had this ad advertising of it. I think it was a tonic called Uvita Formula 44. And the man, the advertising, he might used to say, the two saddest words in the dictionary is too late. And let me tell you, let me tell you the sense I'm, I'm talking to us, not only to you, I'm talking to me too. We are to come together as one. We talk of revival, but there is no, and I repeat it, there is no revival without repentance. And by extension, no repentance, no unity, no revival. And I believe this is why I say, I thank God for the remnant. And I pray that none of us here at Calvary Temple or those who are listening, those who are hearing, I pray that not one of us will lose out on the hope that God has given to us through Jesus Christ who shed his blood, who died and who rose from the dead and is alive forevermore. Never to taste death. And this body which is dying from the time it was conceived, it is dying, do pass away because of sin. But this is what Christ says. Take note of what Christ says. He says, Fear not him who can kill the body and not the soul, but fear him who can destroy both body and soul. And he didn't stop there. He says, in hell. In hell. And this is saying to me that those who, whose name, who have not been found in the Lamb's book of life are worshippers, worshippers of the beast. Now, if the beast has more value than you value the one who made you, you're going to pay a heavy price. You're going to pay a heavy price. As far as I know, Satan can't create nothing other than evil. And let me say this clearly now to who, all those who are hearing my voice. Since arise, be wise, stand firm on the word of God and you will receive the prize at the end of this age. So, I say to you, God has not given us, according to 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. This is why our mind must be in tune and in sync with the mind of Christ. And how can you have the mind of Christ if you do not know him and you do not love him? And then again, how can you love him if you don't know him? So make it your commitment, your purpose to love him to know him first, to love him, and to joyfully walk in obedience to him. He deserves that, all that is due unto him. We were created to worship him. We were created to love him. Wives, love your husband. Your husband is to love the wife. And it's the same with Christ and us as a relation and, and, and this relationship. And this relationship is an eternal, an eternal relationship. One that will last for all 
eternity. And to God, we give all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And remember I said, to be a true worshiper of Christ, the first step is repentance. And repentance is actually saying to God, Lord, I am sorry for all that I have done, all the wrong things that I have done, knowingly and unknowingly. Forgive me. I'm sorry, Lord. But it does not end there. When you have asked God forgiveness and he will forgive you, providing, and I say providing because he knows the heart. If your heart is true and honest in that statement, it is, it is deep within you, this is what you want, you will be forgiven. But if you're just making sport, you think God ain't know? So be serious in this commitment that you will make. Because when we know that if you want to see God, you will see Christ Jesus, who is the visible image of that which is invisible. So we have no doubts or fears that Christ will take good care of us in these tough and trying times. Our hearts are to be thankful for what God has done and what he's doing and what he will do. Love cannot be seen in, in the hearing, but in the doing. And take note of this. We are the church to show the world who God, who Christ is, and not who you are. We are to show who Christ is, not who you are. And you know why? They already know who you are. The world knows who you are already, because they often tell, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. So, my closing word to you is to arise, saints of God. Be wise and run the race towards the prize. And for those whose desire, for those whose desire is to take this walk, make this commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can repeat with me this prayer. And as I said, you must mean it from the depths of your heart. Because God knows the heart, and I can tell you this, he honors the heart. And, and you can repeat this after me. Dear Father in heaven, I thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die in my place. I believe that he came and he died and he rose from the dead and he is alive forevermore. Father, I place my life, my whole being into your hand and I ask that you will guide me through the rest of my years and I ask also that you help me not to stray to the left or to the right, but to keep my eyes fixed on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you have said that prayer and it is meant from your heart, God will honor it and you need to align yourself with a 
Bible believing church who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and align yourself with people who knows the word. But as I, I would warn you, not people who profess, but people who are genuine. And I guarantee you that if you walk with the Lord and mean it, you will know those who are upright, whose love is for God and for you, and you would know those who are not his. And I say thank you. Father and God, I do give you thanks and praise for using me, Lord God. You are a great and mighty God. And Father, in these tough and troubling times where there's so much uncertainty, Lord God, as to what we are to do, Lord God, I ask that by thy spirit, come, lead us. Lead us, Heavenly Father, that we may not, we may not stumble and fall. But Lord, even if we stumble and fall, Lord, take us back up. Don't let us stay down, but take us up and even strengthen us even more. For sometimes we know, Lord God, that trials come to make us stronger, Lord God. Help us to see in these times, oh Lord God, where many people are facing death right, right head on. Lord, I ask that you will give us the strength, the courage, the wisdom, and the understanding that only comes from you to live through these times, Lord God, and to help those who do not know you, who you know will come into the fold. Lord, I commit our lives into your hands, all those who know you and love you, and Lord, I know without a shadow of a doubt, you are able to keep all those whose minds and hearts are set on you, who is committed to you, even until the day of Christ. So Father, have thine own way in our midst. When I say in our midst, not only at Calvary Temple, but in the midst of your people wherever they are on the face of this earth. For the earth and its fullness thereof are yours and you are in control. Blessed be your holy name from now on till eternity, all eternity. Amen. Mm, praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Evangelist Dalton Spencer. Thank you so much for bringing the rich word of the Lord to our attention this morning, not only for today, Sunday, this first Sunday in the month of March 2021, but for all of the days remaining on the calendar as this message now is podcasted, as we say, having premiered this morning from Calvary Temple Community Church, Barbados. Uh, now it is on our Facebook page and, of course, on our YouTube channel. Please, I encourage you to share it and uh, let others know concerning the fact that Christ's return is just around the corner and we really need to make sure that we observe the uh, biblical protocols. I know we observe a lot of other protocols that we are overwhelmed with day in and day out. But there is another government that asks of us to observe some even more important protocols. And that government is the heavenly government that will never, ever pass away. Okay? So as a matter of fact, here's what I'm going to ask us to do just before we uh, conclude. Maybe you're there in your living room, you're in your kitchen. Uh, Ma'am, maybe you're even over that pot, sir, and you're stirring. If you can, just get that fire turned down as low as you can. And I want you to uh, place one hand on your forehead. I want to pray for many of us who I know are going through a lot of uh, difficult times. And sometimes you feel as though you're going out of your mind out of your mind. I know we talk about the, the body and the virus attacking the body and the vaccine in the body and we're, we're very concerned about what's going on in our earthly bodies but uh, there is another concern that is now becoming even of greater concern <laughs> and that is the one that has to do with our mental processes and I want us to to pray one of the things the evangelist Spencer mentioned in his message just now was the fact that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. 
And that's what I want to really lift before the Lord today. So, Father and God, with our hands placed on our foreheads right now all over the world, whoever is watching this from state to state, parish to parish, country to country, I pray, God, across the region and the wider diaspora, that you would touch our minds, help our minds to be at peace. I pray, God, our minds will be at rest. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 26, 3, you will give in, keep in perfect peace. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed upon you. May our minds be fixated, stayed upon you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the precious name of the Holy Spirit. That word of God that you heard today, as was quoted by Evangelist Spencer in 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given you a spirit of fear. And there's a lot of fear-mongering going on, and I trust that today you take this message seriously as we approach Christ's very, very soon imminent return. We've got to make sure that our minds are at peace. He's given us sound minds. And if you're not careful, your mind will be everything but sound. As a matter of fact, next week, Sunday evening, uh, those of you who can connect with us, not this evening, not this evening, next week, Sunday evening, that's the 14th of March, We've got a special Zoom session, and we'll be dealing with uh, mental wellness. So that's going to be a health clinic. It will not be uh, necessarily on YouTube or on Facebook, but I'm mentioning it here because you may see it advertised on Facebook as we approach next week, Sunday evening at 6.30 p.m. And if you can get that code, get the code and the password, we'll probably have that there. Uh, for your uh, taking and you can check it out during the course of this week as we promote it on our Facebook page and uh, get online with us join us as we talk in terms of health mental health mental wellness a very very important uh, health clinic mental health clinic a webinar of sorts and we'll be doing that on zoom and if one of the uh, one of our members long-standing members will be facilitating that and that is sister Patricia Linton uh, she's a retired instructor and a psychiatrist, a head nurse as well. So I look forward to joining with you and having you join with us. That's March 14th, 6.30 p.m. on Zoom with that mental wellness webinar. God bless you. So from Calvary Temple Community Church, it's great once again to have had you with us. And I look forward to your communicating with us. Share this message once again. Be a digital evangelist. Every time you share a message on your page, you're joining the, the growing cadre of individuals who take that very, very seriously. Because this is the way how the world is going. You may not be able to come and knock on my door, but you certainly can put a message right in my Facebook page. <laughs> or on my Facebook page, all right? Or share it with me on WhatsApp or something like that. So I look forward to for you doing that. Uh, those of you who've been giving and giving and you continue to do that sacrificially, I always like to take a moment to thank you. Giving thanks is so very important. I've learned over the years that it opens doors, opens doors wide, gateways of opportunity and God blesses. You don't have to kick doors down in order to make a way. God will make a way for you. You just do what God has called you to do. Be obedient Follow principles, follow biblical protocols, and express gratitude. And I've discovered doors open wide. God is faithful. Amen. And what a man sows or a woman sows, they certainly shall reap. So more power to you all as you continue to give on this platform on behalf of all of the pastors here at Calvary, together with the board of directors and all of the membership, all of the fellowship. We bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit of God. Looking forward to connecting with you once again next Sunday. Stay close to our Facebook page now, because remember, we're going to be dropping some important things there. Look forward to seeing you same time, same place, next Sunday morning from CTCC here in Barbados, 10 a.m. God bless you. Bye-bye.